the Champions Cup is back and what a weekend of knockout rugby we have in store. Leinster and Munster take on English opposition while in the Challenge Cup, Ulster and Connacht face daunting trips to France. That leaves us with plenty to discuss on the latest episode of the Left Wing Podcast. Will Slattery here and delighted to be joined in studio by Luke Fitzgerald and Rory O'Connor. And great to have you back, Rory. It's been a couple of weeks. I know you've been Cheers. doing Left Wing Podcast, but not with myself and Luke. So looking forward to good to have the back together. Exactly. Um, and an interesting time, 11 weeks since Champions Cup rugby went back into the shadows. It was obviously all six nations for the last couple of weeks. You know, I outlined the fixtures we have to look forward to this weekend. Like, How are you feeling about things? Like, are you excited for the kind of the start of the I, knockout rat race? Yeah, it's funny. I, I remember when the draw was made and isn't, isn't it seven rematches of pool games or something? Like, something it's a like massive amount. And both few. Irish. Like, I don't remember. Really, like, who remembers that Leicester played Leicester a couple of weeks ago? Mm. In North, like, it's kind of so much water has yeah, gone yeah. under the bridge at this stage that there is... Maybe less so at Leinster Leicester because they've met so often in the last couple of years and it's been so one sided. Um, but certainly, I'm going to, to Frank. I'm going to both games. I'm going to Franklin's Gardens on Sunday. Yeah, I think that's going to be a proper proper yeah. game. I'm really looking forward to that. And you know, the Six Nations has probably shifted our, our impressions of English rugby on top of what happened before that. So, um, ah, like knockout. This is what this tournament is now is now built for more than it ever was. The whole pool stage is just to get to this point, and you know, four, four rounds of knockout games. Yes, the sixteen maybe lends itself to the odd, um, the odd mismatch because there's maybe not sixteen quality teams, but this is when it gets good. And, and like the last couple of years, the knockouts have been really good, so I'm looking forward to it now. Yeah, it's funny. I was reading Keen, our colleague Keen's preview, looking ahead to the to the weekend, and he said like Leinster must be sick of the side of Leicester. I'd say. Pretty sure Leicester are more yeah. sick of Leicester. I think Leicester don't really mind. Maybe the, the ticket office, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, yeah, what, what's, they'll probably look at it as almost preparation uh, for the following week. But, no, you know, from your perspective, like, what, what are your thoughts? I know we discussed it a little bit last week when we were looking ahead to, say, Leinster Bulls, which was going to be, a, we thought, a very yeah. tight game on the Friday night. It didn't turn out to be that. Like, Bulls for periods. Yeah. Like, yeah how do you think Leinster and Munster in particular are set? Well, like, obviously touching the other teams later for the Challenge Cup for Munster traveling to Northampton, Leinster hosting Leicester. They had kind of contrasting outings over the weekend, Leinster and Munster, in terms of its performance levels. Yeah, I'd say I'm gonna I'm gonna save um, the Munster uh, one for myself because that's more interesting. <laughs> I think the Leinster one, I I feel is um, look, I just think the power that was on show in open play. I mean, they're just so hard to to keep at bay for for eighty minutes. You know, you saw you know, how they struggled at scrum time and different things like that. And then a few comeback scrums here and there, but mostly over the course of the game, they kind of struggled and, you know, some of the power aspects against a, a South African team, the Irish teams have, have, you know, you saw a bit of that. Um, you know, Ulster as well had a few struggles at scrum time as well. Um, but uh, for Leinster, look, I think, yeah, um, looking strong, you know, um, good to see Larmer back there as well. I thought that was really exciting to see him have a good game. I think the, the team looks in a good place. Um, still a few teething problems defensively, I thought, here and there as well. I'd be, you know, they got it together, but still a few moments where, I, you know, at the start of the game where I thought, is that defence? How well is that defence betting in? So I, it's probably less of a sure thing, I think. Leicester look like they may have, like, are they... Will they be able to put it up to Leinster? I don't think so. I think Leinster will just have too much on the bench combined. They just have too much power there over the course of 80 minutes. But uh, I still think there's areas where Leicester will look at and say, okay, well, we might be able to get a bit of pay there. And um, that makes it a little bit intriguing. And I think, um, you know, I can't see Leinster losing that one. To move on to the, to the second part of the question, the more interesting one is Munster. Um, I mean, they kind of stumbled a bit, didn't they, over the weekend? That was a tricky fixture. A uh, bit of... Crowley magic kind of settled the nerves at a kind of key point. That was, I mean, the footwork on show. It was pretty ropey defense now by Cardiff. But um, I think, um, yeah, that that is an interesting fixture. You think they'll be able to get up mentally for that game, having lost Northampton, um, you know, and will will Northampton take it easy? Will they think that they have uh, Munster's number? I, I don't think so. I think that was such a tight game that I can't see that happening. So uh, I'd say that's the most intriguing fixture for me. I think will Munster have the comeback? Will they have that little bit of grit in their teeth from uh, the, the 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 hurt in Town Park? Um, so yeah, and, and they look a little bit patchy still to me. I, I'm, I, I'm, I can't put my finger exactly on what was wrong. Like they couldn't get their, their act together. Once they gave that intercept pass away, they really lost heart, didn't they, for for periods of the game, and couldn't couldn't get that killer instinct until obviously the Crowley moment. So um, they have a bit of a journey to go on. I think a win in Franklin's Gardens could be 
their South Africa match last year. You know, I could kick them on because there's still loads of quality there um, at Munster and they, they could be a threat late in, in the competition. But um, yeah, we wait and see on that one. That's the one I'm really looking forward to, to be honest with you, Will. I don't know about you. Yeah, Rube, like, what's your perspective when mm. Munster are going into this Franklin's Garden game? Like, they've had a, they had a really bizarre pool stage in the sense that their results ended up putting them as a fourth seed. But They were winning a lot of the games, though, Will. Oh, you know? They could have easily gone four from four. You know, the yeah. Bayonne game, when they drew it, what Bayonne sent over a second string team, extra losing a big lead. Some kind of freaky try. Like Northampton had 14 men for the entire second half and Munster yeah. had a big lead there at home in Tomlin Park. Like, so and yet they, won, they went to Sudan yeah, and won the with their hardest game, game by and miles. played great rugby. They've had a strange season. Very strange, like, I think. I think, like, I think winning, they won the URC ahead of schedule and you take any win you get, especially when you hadn't won for so long and it was brilliant the way they did it. It was such a great story. But it, I was going to say it wasn't built on strong foundations. It was... It came very early in this coaching tickets uh, tenure and they'd had such a patchy season and they had so many bad spells last year and there were so many teething problems that it was such a shock at the end of the year that they went on this run of away wins and and it was it was brilliant. But it was never there I know I probably tipped them as outsiders for this tournament, so maybe I'm 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 kind of um I don't think people would have doubted you on that own road style. Yeah. Like you couldn't I, see, so I, think, I know the injury problems, guys, right? Well, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. No, but they've had huge injury problems, yeah. but also they don't, like, they're still not, they don't have the foundations Leinster have. They don't have the La Rochelle squad. They don't have, they needed things to go right for them in this tournament for it to go right, for, for them to go far. And their squad, like, their injuries came back to bite them in the second, in the last quarter of those games where their mm. bench just wasn't as strong as their opposition. Now, Bayonne at home, yeah. I know Bayonne produced something pretty special that night, but that's a game they had to win. That yeah. was a real disappointment. Uh, Exeter away, like Exeter, would, we probably would have backed Exeter to win that game and then Munster played brilliant rugby, beat the rush and then fell apart in the last 15 minutes. Uh, Toulon was brilliant and then um, the Northampton game, again, I was there and, and they had great surges of, of intensity with Crowley, Crowley running the show and then they fell apart in the second half and I still think they're 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 quite a little bit fragile as a team, and and hmm. Saturday showed that. But I think both Leinster and Munster will really benefit from having tough games. I think Cardiff were very good in Thomond yeah, Park on, on on Saturday, and probably challenged Munster in a way that they maybe they needed to be challenged. You know, a fifty point win over Zebra probably wouldn't have suited them last week. I think both teams have came through that and gone right. We've we've a lot to go, but um, I they I feel bl- like they haven't got the. Do you know what? I, just to add, Rose, I. I I, I, they feel like a team that haven't won many big moments in games mm. to me. But if they could turn that, they, you know, things could look very different for them. And if they, if they can turn it at a crucial point in the season, I still think they have quality here. I think they have won something. That always helps a team, yeah. uh, you know, that have that belief. They did it the tough way. So you have something that you can fall back on and say, okay, look, we, we went away. We went, we went to... Um, Aviva's not really an away fixture, but we, we beat Leinster. You know, we went away and we we won in South Africa. You know, we yeah. won in all these places. Big, big so this team well. has that, you know. They've and then they have, you, but you have these kind of big players coming back in. You're kind yeah. of Snymans, you're Amani's. You're these guys are kind of yeah. coming back into the picture. Big time players. Crowley has the a little bit of an international experience behind him. You would you worry maybe back three is the one area where I feel and, and front row are the one areas where you feel like that that might hinder this team taking the next step. But everywhere else. They're bloody competitive, I think, and they'd be you'd be hard pressed to pick too many teams that are I, that much better than them I, in their back five, and particularly from nine all the way to thirteen. I think. I um, think the pool results have scuppered them a little bit because they could go to Franklin's Gardens yeah. and win a tight game, but then they isn't it the Bulls, Bulls away? Yeah, Bulls yeah, away, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. That's a horrible draw. Are they staying in South Africa? Yeah, then? so it'll be Bulls, so it Bulls, be, Bulls back to back. Like, that'd be incredible, <laughs> and like they did it in South Africa last year. A but going to Loftus, series. like you know, you know what Loftus is like, and and the Bulls have something behind them. I know they got a bit of a, a kick in last weekend, but they were very competitive in within the game, certainly in that first half. And at home at Loftus, they're a different proposition. Mm, and yeah. I actually give Munster more of a chance the second week when they've acclimatised, if if they get to that point. So their their route to glory here is very, very difficult. And if they beat Northampton, I just can't see them getting past the Bulls. So mm. it's uh, it's very, very tough because of the what happened in the pool stages. But it could also be... Like Saturday, could, Sunday could be Peter Armani's final European game for Munster. Yeah. So there's a cause there as well. You know, there's always a cause at Munster. Mm. But, you know, one of the great unchecked boxes in his career is, is that Champions Cup, Cup success at Munster. Even he'd never won a trophy at Munster, really. I know he was part of the squad in 2012 when they won the, the Magnus League. But until the URC win, he'd never really been part of a, yeah. a proper Munster winning team. And I'm sure there's if he announces his, confirms his retirement, if, as we all expect, in the next little while, then there's another cause for them to get behind. So, um, I don't know. I, I think it's a relatively 50-50 game going to Franklin's Gardens, but I think they're 
the long term prospects yeah. for them. I think the URC is a much yeah. better route to, to a Northampton piece of Bulls. Potentially like Leinster or Rochelle, then away. And then but a semi's a semi. They get to a semi, yeah. I think they've had so a great it's season. Game on and then, it's game yeah. on. But like, it, you know, and, and Northampton or the Bulls in a once off. The Bulls away is such a hard knockout yeah, fixture. Like, yeah. with a, with, on, on the run, taking that on the run, that's, that's, that's really difficult. But even this weekend is a hard, hard game for a squad that have been so patchy this season and still have a massive. They've nine. I think it was nine injured players on the on their injury list. Snyman's a doubt. He's ill. Calvin Nash is a doubt. Such an ill. Um, Snyman's like <laughs> he's a nightmare for the last <laughs> I know. Week. Such a good player. I'm mean, excited. Yeah. Like, no, is, there's no illnesses in Dublin. to be grand next year. I was like, going to say, yeah. I guarantee he will not miss a single game next year. I just know it. I just know for a fact he'll just be a clean bit of health all year next year for some oh, for whatever reason. Just their look. Look, it's it, they're in an interesting spot, aren't they? I, like I, I would say they've got experienced halfbacks that always helps you. I think Crowley looks like he's he'll settle in nicely to the big stage you know he, you know and, and he can lead this team you know he's proven that i think and he's only going to only going to get better i think as the season goes on with that uh, that six nations experience remember he won there too you know and barely missed a minute so uh you have to imagine he'll play with, with big confidence and it'll take a week or two to get guys back in and get everyone running around mm. him properly and all that so there's timing issues all those things that you expect he'll get better the team will get better around him so if they get the guys back they're competitive against anyone i think um but you know, the reason we all had them tipped to go far in this thing was that, you know, the proviso was that they would do something well, they, they, they'd go well in, in the pool stages and they made a complete hang yeah. to it. Yeah. I mean? So it's tricky for them now. The you know? point Rudd made about winning the league ahead of schedule, but what it also gives you is that good draw. Like, that's why the, that's what the confidence is based on. Like, Bayonne at home in the first game when they're sending a second string. Like, Exeter, yeah. who were good, but not great, and they're in a rebuild but, away from home is when you're away yeah, fixtures. Yeah. We, like, that was what I, I thought. I We all them. underestimated the English teams, which is what's given me a slight bit of note of caution about bit getting too carried away mm. with even Leicester Leinster, because... There's a lot of players on the pitch in these two games at the weekend who were on the pitch in Twickenham. Yeah. And you can't underestimate what that will have given, like George Martin going up against John McCarthy this week. There's a bit of doubt in John McCarthy's mind because mm. he's gone up against this guy, you know, Ollie Chesham, Dan Cole. Like these guys have recently, they come off of Six Nations where they're feeling good about themselves. Yeah. And because of the, 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 the smaller premiership, all of the three teams that went bang, their players have filtered into the other teams and they've all become a little bit stronger. Saints were really impressive in Thomond Park. Like yep. Munster lost that game, but Saints went and won it. Finn Smith was brilliant. They have a back line against, again, Furbank, um, Freeman on the wing. They have players who've recently been in that England camp feeling good about themselves. They play a nice brand of rugby. It's a lovely pitch. It'll be a great place for, for this Munster team to go and play because even on Friday, the hard net disallowed try in the first half, like there is... You know, they they have a game that that's suited to this time of year, so that that's another great thing. So I think that's why I'm so excited about it. I think there's two really good teams, and again, Northampton have a cause because Courtney Laws is finishing up with them at the end, end yeah. of this season, um, and like he's there, Peter O'Mahony, he's going to breathe, isn't he? So he's, um, you know, they've got a last dance thing going on as well, and like they've got a bit of pedigree in this competition. They're former winners. They've been to a final, um, and they'll want they they'll see this as a home game as an opportunity, and I think English rugby starting to feel good about itself. So. I wouldn't be like it's, I think there's a 16 point spread in the Aviva. I think Leicester could go a bit closer than they have done in recent years because I think the gap has narrowed a little bit, particularly between Leinster, sorry, Ulster, Munster, and Connacht. I think Leinster is still out in front, but Munster certainly need to produce something pretty. This will go down, I think, as one of Munster's good, you know, really. I wouldn't be one of their great wins, but it'd be a fairly seismic away yeah. knockout win if they if they can pull it off. I think where the team is, it will be a big win. Mm. Yeah. I think I actually think I know Northampton are top of the table, but like I, I think it's a pretty even game. Like I actually don't think Northampton are a major. Players. Oh yeah, no, I, can't, I can't see. Oh, Northampton. I, don't, I, don't. I haven't looked at the bookies, but I can't see Munster. Getting, I can't see Munster getting blown out in this one. No, I no, don't. I don't see I, that. I think Munster no. have a very good chance of winning this game. Like in, this for me, you know, a lot of people, when as you mentioned at the top of the show. Uh, the amount of repeat fixtures. This is one I'm in, excited to see because yeah. I, I do think it's like a good, like, you know, Northampton nicked one in Tom and they're kind of going back and out to the Franklin's Gardens. So I think well, last year they did the big row on the day of the World Cup, yeah. the, the, the the football World Cup final, like they, they, uh, yeah. just before sure, kickoff. In, now, yeah. Just before kickoff in Qatar, like there was a they, really tight game over there. Crowley was playing 12 alongside Carberry, if, if I remember correctly. And it was a big, like, all in brawl in the middle of the game and, like, bad weather. Niggly stuff like these two clubs. I mean, there's a yeah, proper history. Some of the yeah. things you Bastard. mentioned there, like good subplots like Laws and Oman in the back row. You've finished with Richard Jack Curley. Like, there's good subplots all over the pitch. And the, the half 12 kickoff, I think, benefits Munster. Like, the atmosphere yeah. shouldn't be like, you know, if it was a, it's a proper rubber game. Like, you've yeah. played there, haven't you? Like, that's a great game. It's a, a big trick. ground to play in. 
Should have been four. <laughs> <laughs> Never forgive Nugget for that one. Sean Cronin threw a four pass. Was, was that, that 2013 one. after the, the All Blacks game? And then they came back and beat yeah. us. Remember we threw the intercept yeah. at the oh, end of the game? Some, oh, yeah, oh, got scragged. The like. man who never made a mistake in a big game. It was the only mistake I've nearly ever seen the guy make in a big game. Yeah. Um, yeah. that thrown that intercept and that intercept was the difference actually between Leinster getting a home quarter final and having to go to two oh, it was a even killer. if they hadn't scored if he hadn't taken it to the house and Leinster still would have been inter- like all week all week we were like do not no like Habana's on that wing no no skip passes not one not one skip pass sorry I'm, I'm ranting here now but that was, that was and then we get to extra time like we, we first they were a way better team than us but yeah. we got them there bad conditions and all that got them to extra time I actually had them on the ropes I think a little bit and then threw the bloody intercept. Makes a man as well. Twenty fourteen was it? <laughs> threw yeah. the skip pass. The no, no, skip pass. Right, I think I think they're two different years. But okay. Uh, yeah. Oh god. Yeah. It was but like a, Northampton pedigree. Like this. Even mm-hmm. the fact that you're able to go back to them. Like they're, they're not like some other clubs. Like there's a proper. Yeah. I really. Oh, like, they like, came back the week after. It tells you a lot about what they're about. They're pretty. Yeah. Like, they're. they're they're like Leicester. They're yeah. they're neighbours. To Le- they're kind of neighbourly clubs. You know what I mean? There's a big rivalry between those yeah. two clubs. But they're 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 storied. You know, they have um, they have a bit of belief behind them. They've won things, as you said. I think yeah. like I know it's miles like it's ages ago, but there's a bit of belief that you get from that. There's a bit of something around a club, a bit of history. Um, I think when you're playing places like that and the people that run the club, they expect to have a little bit of silverware. And it's not that long ago, that's not too long ago that they've won a Prem, you know what yeah. I mean? So th- these these guys have belief in, in what they're doing and their project. And I think they'll have had big belief in that Munster win. That was Absolutely. big for them. Yeah, you know? and I, I don't know if they mm-hmm. have the tight five strength to get to make kind of an advantage of of, what, of where Munster are probably at, at yeah, their yeah. weakest. You know, I think, especially if, if Munster gets Snyman on the pitch, then I don't know if Mon- if Northampton are a team that can overpower them. You'd fear for them maybe in, in Pretoria a week later if they got over the line. I think they're, they're well matched in the back row. They're well matched 9-10. And then the back lines, I think you're right, probably back three. Like you've got two at England back three who've been pretty yeah, good recently. Nash is fit, obviously. He's well, Nash, is, Nash yeah. is big. But, you know, and Shane Daly's a fine player and Haley's back playing well and, and Zebo's there on the bench if, if they choose to go that way. So they have good players, but I'm not sure like they're... They're quite as like How's, honored as, as Furbank and, and Freeman are, are. What's the word on Zebo? Is he like because he was kind of playing out of a skin before he got injured? Is he? I think Haley's their first choice. And is I, he I, their first choice? Because this is what I was wondering about this. Because I think Zebo gives them another dimension. Yeah, and I think he's so good in the air as well. Like if you pick Murray, um, you know, at some point, you know, or you expect him to get on the pitch at least. Um, you know, if you go to the high ball, like you know, Zebo was unbelievable. Mm. You know, when he was fit. So, well, I he played twenty three last weekend. So you wonder whether yeah. that's where, where is that just him go? reintroducing slowly? That was my thing. I wonder was it where they kind of gone? Okay, we will get him another week of training. No, you can read too much into them. Like I, I'm kind of reading a lot into Harry Burns starting on Friday night, and I'm thinking they're going to go with him again this weekend. But you know, I like I, I think good Zebo. I think mm. Haiti is the the main man there, but Zebo has been so good for them in Europe mm. this year, and he hasn't really put a foot wrong. That's what and I'm looked pretty him. sharp when he came on as well. There was yeah. a bit of gas behind him, so um, he's looked good. Even if you bring him on with twenty minutes ago yeah. with Murray, you almost have a, a bit of game changer there. Their, their relationship yeah, so fair. strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's a big. That's one of the big selection calls for him this weekend. But I just feel like he op- like if you're playing that game, and I think Munster are like they can play that kind of fast paced offloading game. That you know he also gives you that kicking dimension. I think you know he's so good there as well. Like he is to me their kind of other skill player. You know, outside of Crowley, you know, he's the guy that can kind of unlock defenses with a pass or with a bit of footwork. Frisch has a bit of that as well. In fairness. Yeah, Frisch does, but he's uh, I, I like those two in the center just because they're yeah. they're physical and that's what I I like that pairing for that reason. They're like they're both good runners with ball in hand. Yeah, they can they can dish a pass, but I wouldn't say if I was thinking about them like Nine Kevin Affair is probably more so. But I just think the ball handling bit Zebo is the guy for me yeah. outside of Crowley that does unlock that bit. The other guys. I'm not seeing them. I, I wouldn't see them as that. I think they're a really nice pairing, though. I, I will say that. Yeah. Um. So it is interesting to see what they do there because Haley has, has been decent for them. I think this year, uh, he's the probably probably a more solid choice, maybe. Um. But I don't know. I, I feel like away from home, you need a Zebo, or they certainly need him to come on the pitch at some point and have an impact. Um. I think he's an important player for Munster still. Yeah, it's definitely teed up to be a very exciting game on mm. Sunday lunchtime. But yeah, to, to move to the Leinster Leicester game and specifically to look at the Leinster Bulls game because you know we're talking about the Bulls about how serious a team they are and we were really excited about it when we saw the team sheets. Like you know, Bulls brought a full strength team pretty much and Leinster obviously at halftime was very close. Ended up scoring thirty five points and answered like a serious serious statement of intent going into this period where like you know the cliche that Leinster season starts here like they'll be judged whether they can finally win another Champions Cup obviously a URC as well but you know given this is a European week we'll, we'll touch on we'll focus on that one yeah you could argue that they should be down to 14 men for that entire second half I think definitely half. maybe we'll um, touch on that first 
Like I, I definitely think Luke McGrath was lucky. Very like lucky, it was yeah. such a crazy tackle. I mean, you, you he just it, flew, brave. He from, flew in. Like, yeah, like, like head high. It was yeah. mad. It was a mad tackle. Like you kind of half your praises his bravery, and then you're like, well, no, it was really reckless. So, yeah. um, so I mean, like the balls went away from it going right. We were right in it for forty minutes. We're we're not as far along the line as as Lancer are. And we should have been we should have been playing against fifth, playing against fourteen in the second half. And we put, they probably made a lot more mistakes in the second half. I think playing against Leinster just fatigues you, and and probably they weren't used to that level. I mean, the level are like the, I think the Irish players compared to the South African players, particularly now, there's a real benefit to the fact that they've played Six, Six Nations, Nations yeah. and the South African players have been playing URC through that period, and that's there's a massive gulf there. And I think you can that fades as the season goes on. By the time you get the URC knockouts, for example, they'd be better. It's not right? a, that's not as big of a deal, but. Um, I thought the, I thought it was a really good test for Lancer. I thought Bulls I think Goosen's a brilliant out half I think like if he wasn't you know didn't have like so many kind of weird decisions in his career he could have been a, <laughs> like, was, he the could, France one was bizarre yeah the whole, yeah. The, the whole his career's been mad but I think he's a really yeah. clever player and you could see the way he ran things the scrum asked Lancer loads of questions <sighs> the way Lancer picked their bench was interesting the way the bench influenced the game you mentioned Larmer earlier Larmer like looks, up, looks back to himself Rob Russell's Growing on me all the time, looking more looks and more so like a quick. player. I think he looks really quick. Yeah, he I heard Jackman saying he's the quickest guy in the Leinster squad now. Oh, does it? Yeah, um, I'm not surprised, Jay. I, I, I think, um, yeah, no, he probably looks like the quickest to me. He looks definitely certainly has the best running style, and mm. he has really like it's quick as well. It's not just good a beautiful air as well. Yeah, yeah, Osborne decent, looked too. really good. Um, he was like, shaky. He had a shaky start in the air, actually, Russell at all. But they were actually weird kicks. They were kind of like shorter kicks at all. Mm. They're kind of they're weird ones that you nearly always seem to get back. I always think, do you know those shorter box kicks? You always like they look like an absolute mess, and they're certainly not a good kick. It's not what you're trying to achieve, but they always seem to work out. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. So I kind of maybe forgive him for them. I think he's improved certainly in the air there, and he took a few brave ones. He took a few on the ground actually. I was like, yeah. dude, that was a great take. So. He looks like he's pro- improving a lot. He'll get confidence from the finish. I mean, the finish last week was outstanding, wasn't it, uh, from the set play. Um, and then he, anytime he looks like he's in space, he's certainly a threat, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's good to see that, you know, because they do need to develop a bit of depth. And we have been talking a little bit about the kind of the Irish situation around the back three, like, uh, you know, do, do we actually have the depth? Are we, are we developing the depth? So I think his progress has been you know pleasing to see, I think, as well. So good to see those two guys going well. One part of Lens's win that I thought was crucial, mm. and so it ties into a problem that I think we both had, all of us had during the Six Nations, is the use of the bench. Like, Lens made five subs in 46 minutes, and when you have the quality of bench that Lens picked on that night, it was so devastating, especially in that England game at Twickenham. Like, you yeah. know, Jesus, I didn't make a sub until 63 minutes. England had made four or five at that yeah. stage. Like, I just felt like Andy Farrell never really used his bench bar the Wales game as a weapon. Uh, yeah. I thought it was kind of reactive or passive, whereas that's the way I think it should be used. When you have the depth and the power, the strength, oh, yeah. the quality, unleash them like that early in the second half when they can really do damage rather than waiting until the opposition gets a foothold and then you're kind of scrambling to get your initiative back. But anyway, along with the way you're saying, I thought it worked well. Yeah. Um, I mean, Twickenham, I think it was low ball in play and that's probably what, what drove that that he felt like the players hadn't emptied themselves but I think that 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 goes against your game feel and like you know and, and Farrell's someone who I think does have a good game sense yeah. and, and he, he missed the trick that day and then Oman he gets himself Simbin just before they all come on and he can't bring Baird on and I think yeah. Baird is probably almost your most impactful player um, but I think Lancer I think Nina Abbott, that's something like he's never been afraid to yeah. use his bench you know that's something that like I mean I've been watching Chasing the Sun um, like seeing Arazi at work behind the scenes, like you're, I'm even more enthralled with a man than I than I was before. <laughs> was but like Nina Aber has has brought some stuff there, and, and obviously Leo has him on board for a reason, and they're listening to him. So mm. definitely, like if you got Dan Sheen and and Caelan Doris on your bench, get them on the pitch. Like give some park, yeah. give some yeah. Gibson park. Like the difference he made, yeah. and Luke, Luke McGrath is a good player, but like Gibson Park, a, a couple of the Leinster players, actually, sorry, Hugo Keenan and Mac Hansen recently have said he's the best player in the world. They both kind of acknowledge they name check Dupont, but they go. People no, don't appreciate a, how good this this guy is. Now I think Dupont's a better player, he's miles better. But I think Gibson <laughs> Parks like really good. Yeah, like definitely. his teammates value him so highly, and the pace that he brought, like yeah, he yeah. was such a game changer for them. Yeah. I, I, I actually find it offensive to actually but, think someone would say but someone's better than Dupont. It's almost he's like the so influence he exerts versus like how good he is, in the sense that like it's almost how he plays rather than how well he is relative it's what he does to the, the team. He's yeah, in. yeah. Like he he ramps up the pace of the teams yeah. he plays in, and it's he's such a great addition like for a player who was so unheralded when they signed him to be this good I mean he's like he was a sub he was a sub scrum half for like five years for I mean not five years at least three yeah. seasons well it's certainly duking it out first two years more so but I think the, four there seasons was, I just counted that he was sub- yeah but, but he was more it was more of a like he was 50-50 there was two uh, he, he was a single big game until like 2021 I'd say 
I felt like it was more 50 50 to me. I'm actually looking around when it started that Champions Cup semi final. I'm sorry, Shiller. I don't remember if I've thought of it yeah. as I've thought of it until now. Like, but. I, look, he's certainly come on and I think he's absolutely integral. Yeah. I think the situation here is also perfect for him. I think Ireland have figured out that we're never going to be the biggest team. We have to be very physical. I think you can see all that. And that's something that we don't probably talk about enough about this team. But I think the way they've developed Lancaster, uh, I think had a massive impact behind the scenes on how, how well the ball, like the, the skills that are on show from the, the pack in, you know, in Leinster, Ireland and Munster, I think have really come on there as well. The skills there really play to someone like Gibson Park because it means that no one's he's not worried about throwing passes to guys in the he doesn't have to be a perfect pass. He can throw it quickly when guys aren't really ready. They're able to pick it, they're still able to pass. He's in the perfect situation for the type of player he is. Um I, I will say, and I want to just say it again, there's no DuPont, and it's not even close who the second is. I think there's no Kino, debate. I think Keenan like, was asked the most underrated player in the world. I think the clip okay. I saw saw and he was like, Well, I know I, I, I'd be amazed thinks, at that. You think yeah, everyone thinks yeah. Gibson Park is good, but he's actually almost underrated. I would agree with that statement because yeah. I do Chris, think he can go I'm under the radar a little bit. Yeah. No, sorry, it could have been a But even handsome was like everyone talks about DuPont, but you like we value this guy so much. Man's physical attributes just take him oh, to another yeah, level. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, got, he's got the player. kick he's in. Got he's got everything. Now. <laughs> you know, he's even in the conversation. Yeah, like, it's interesting. You know, you yeah. writing about you know Burn versus Burn, the, the big selection debate. Because we, I asked you last week, like, who did you think was in the driver's seat? You said you were like Ross Burn for me. Still, definitely, you think it's Harry. Obviously, you were basing well, him as well it's on the close now. Though. On the I don't selection. think Ross has come out of his injury particularly well. I don't think he's in great form. I thought he was actually good off the bench and um, watching the game today. The Cardiff game um, during his Six Nations, he was poor. Yeah, well. like, and, uh, like it, t- it takes a while after a big absence like that. Mm. And Harry's been in the seat. He's played all the big games that he's been fit for. They've backed him. He's been through a Six Nations where he was in every training session, comes off the bench in two games, played very well off the bench against Italy, I thought, mm. probably less so in the in the Scotland decider, but like no one really played well that day. But the experience looked like it had really stood to him when he was out there on, on Friday night. I thought he looked really, really sharp. I thought he made good decisions. I thought his passing was good. I thought his kicking was largely very good. And we're beginning to see, I think, why so many people rated him so highly when he first came on the scene. And for so long, we were talking about Harry Byrne in terms of potential. But we're now seeing him back up game after game after game. And even talking to Andrew Goodman at the press conference yesterday, he was saying, yeah, it's just time in the saddle. And he's not pulling up injured, you know, the warm up for big games when he gets the opportunity. He's he's backing up games. Yeah. So I think, why would you start Harry ahead of Ross last Friday when the team hasn't been together for so long if he wasn't going to play this weekend? I think that would be, like, it would remind me a little bit of, the, if they, it would kind of point to the fact that they actually haven't learned anything from last season. When they kind of mix the match too much in the in the end go, end, end game of the season, if you're gonna play Ross, then play Ross last Friday. Like, you know, start him, give him time in the saddle because he needs time as well. He needs to get his form. I, it looks to me like they're gonna go. I wonder will they go Harry and then Frawley on the bench in a six two. So no Ross Brown at all. Potentially, yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got two sure. Ireland internationals it's, there it's as well. It's funny, like Rudd's uh, reasoning there and the logic makes sense, but I don't entirely trust the way they've been picking their out halves. That like there is. A, Logic. No. Uh, Ross is just, I think, a steadier hand for me. And I just think the kicking was maybe where I would feel, even though uh, the stats might, might be that different. I just feel like Ross has done it on a few big occasions. You know, he's got the crucial kick. Uh, and I always like that about him. I think he's got a real calm head about him. But I completely agree with you. I think Harry, it doesn't the, the selection policy has been weird in that position for Leinster anyway. Um, I've been amazed that Frawley hasn't left the club off the back of it. And I think as well, Harry Byrne, um, you know, he needs time there. And he's had injuries and different things like that. But um, yeah, it would be, I think it made much more sense to start the guy who you started last weekend in this match this weekend. Do you know what I mean? So that's where I think they're, you know, that, that that's where I, I think you're 100% right. And that would where I think if you were thinking pragmatically about it, you know, just to give, because I think that's of all the positions, 10 to me is that connector and I just think you need time to be with both to feel the, the the pace of the game people need to feel how you see the game and how quickly you're making decisions around you and I just think playing playing, uh, having time on the pitch with the players is crucial of all the positions that one the most it's like the biggest question hanging over Leinster this season well sorry there's two big questions hanging over Leinster this season if the first one is just can they get it done because they haven't got it yeah. done for the last three years but because Sexton, they've never won a Champions Cup without Sexton. Mm. And he's gone now. Like Ross Byrne's got them, you know, got them to a semi final in 2021. 2020, yeah, 2021 didn't get the job done. 2023 didn't get the job done. And look, it's harsh to lay the blame at one, uh, the, the shoulders of one guy. And But Ohio West aside, no team has, has ever really won a, 
a Champions Cup without a, a really good out half. Maybe Hastoy again falls into that conversation. Joe Simmons. Um, maybe. maybe Joe Simmons. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it's. But I'm thinking more of the Gittos, Wilkinson, Sexton's, yeah, Ogaras, those I, I, teams I just, over the years. Yeah. You know, it's it's one hundred percent right. And Ogar and and, and Byrne copped a lot of blame and maybe harshly so after the Champions Cup final last year for the way he managed the end game and not pulling the trigger with a drop goal. Ross, I'm talking about, but. There's a, still a question over him in those big games. And there's still also a question about his pace. And I think Harry has a little bit more injection, a bit more creativity and attack. But he probably doesn't tick the boxes Ross does in terms of the steadiness that he has, his goal kicking, and some of his decision making. So there's like none of them are perfect. None of them are Johnny Sexton. None of them, none of them will probably ever be Johnny Sexton. And um, we'll see with Prendergast in a couple of years, but he's not in this conversation yeah. yet. So it's a massive question is what can Leinster get it done without Sexton and who is the right one to lead him there? And I know you, you feel like you're a big Frawley fan. Well, I, look, I think that ship has sailed though. That, that, that's, I think, yeah. Yeah, Leinster, it definitely has. It's like, you know, anyone who says differently, I think is kidding themselves or just, I, I, well, I don't, is not seeing it the way I'm seeing it, certainly anyway, um, which I think is fairly obvious at this point. Yeah. They think the two Byrne brothers are their, are their, two, their two starting tens. And they've got the young fella in the pipe there. Once they're the not afraid to put Frawley in twenty two and bring him on. No, kick. but he's perfect for a six two split because he yeah. gives you options elsewhere. Like that's going to be his big problem. It's always been the thing that I've been banging on about saying it's going to be his big problem. He's a Swiss Army knife, and he's the guy who's going to get cut in the big Champions Cup days, as far as I can see, unless they go with the six two. Yeah. Um. I, the other thing I would say is, like uh, Harry, I think his defense has come on a little bit too. He might have a slight edge over his brother there, which they might like. Um. And I just would come in on the point on the Ross Byrne thing. Uh, I'm. Uh, I think there's a bigger question over Leinster. I think for whatever reason that the blame seemed to fall at his feet last year because he didn't pull the trigger on a drop goal. But I didn't think there was an obvious opportunity in that last phase of play. Now, they were close and there was times he could have made an opportunity. He could have said, no, we're not going anywhere. Pick and go here to we're in front of the post. Da, da, da. He could have done that. But actually, they were there was they were making yards. They had them on the rack there. And there's a, a, a city piece of play from another player that pretty much cost them winning the game. Um, and I think there's bigger there's bigger questions over Leinster and their defense and can they stick it to can they can they hang on for 80 minutes against the likes of La Rochelle and I think their set piece can they can they survive at scrum time and I'm still not 100% sure that those two questions have been answered Nidabar is supposed to answer the defensive one but uh, I'm less convinced having watched them so far that against a La Rochelle or a big team that they will not leak a try or two at, cr at crucial points so I think they're the bigger questions around Lancer for me versus Byrne I, I, I don't think he's yeah. the bigger the big I, question I, I, but I, I'm a, I'm, no, I can I, see I, why people would I, say and it's that really hard, it's a harsh thing to say and, 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 mm. and it's until he, he leads Lancer to it that will always hang over yeah. him and that's just the nature uh, of by the way playing. I think it's a fair question sort of way I, do, I will say that you yeah, know? And I think, but I think the mental yeah. fragility which is a strong you know hangs over a lot of these Irish players you know mm. the, you'd look at the World Cup quarter final mm. um, like they've won a Grand Slam yes they kind of fell over the line against England in that, in that it's decider. not a knockout tournament though, it's not know. a knockout it's tournament it's Twic a tweaking them they, you know, went down to the last play you know they 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 didn't manage the last five minutes very very well they went into the, they, you know, they defended really poorly in the end game a lot of these players are back you know I don't think they're going to have they played brilliantly in a game where they were under pressure the third the test in New Zealand is, is, is the, the one, one that you'd always that's the, draw that's back. That's the one and, and, I think is the exception, though. And like, I know is, is that an exception, though? Do you think? Well, I, I, mean, feel they, like I think they built up the South Africa game to a point and the Scotland game at the World Cup to a point where they thought they mattered uh, as much as a knockout game. And, and, and I think that was actually a mistake in hindsight. But I wasn't saying it at the time, so it's, I'm, I'll hold my hands up there. So they have delivered in big games on big occasions. Like, Leicester to lose two years in a row, like hammering them, like their big games. Like, semi-finals, semi like yeah, semi-finals, semi it's winner at home. Are they great teams? To lose with DuPont, like, uh, and Ramos, and they, they won the league last year. I, and Entomac, like... They had had that game like, like, before against Munster. Like, I know the, last year, one. like, there was a injury and then moved DuPont to 10 and yeah like look you can put mitigating for I, I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking the question no. because I'm actually interested to no. know if people feel like it's a, it's a <laughs> is it a Leinster thing an Irish player because like a, a, you know, a, a huge amount of these guys are in the same are in both camps mm. Le, Ireland have had the success in the kind of leagues thing but even in the big games where they're closing out the tournament where you're kind of saying that game against the game against England probably stands out a little bit where I just thought they were poor in that mm. one. The yeah. game against Scotland thought they were poor and it was a little bit closer than it should. Like it was closer yeah. at the end. It was sweaty a little bit at the end. Mm. No, not for long. Oh, but I, you know, that's my, my 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 concern about them is I wonder is there 
what's going on? What's happening that at these key big games? Are, are, with Leinster too, but like you even know, the Champions Cup, Leinster actually did win in this era. They really fell over the line against Racing yeah, yeah. when they could. They were three points down with about five or six points to go against a pretty mediocre. Now finals are a bit well, like that anyway. Mediocre, strong, mediocre. Yeah. Strong. I mean, they lost their out half in the first five minutes, but that was mediocre. Good but but f- finals are a bit like in sports generally can be a bit like that. It's yeah. rare that you get the one where you know, that great team, like unless they're really like, like unless it's a kind of a mismatch, it's very rare you get a final where, you know, someone really plays their best football or saves for the final. Generally, it's kind of a defensive kind of, you know, it's, you know, they're a defensive kind of game. Whoever does that a bit better, whoever's a bit more street smart, generally wins. And that, kind of like, if you think of the New Zealand South Africa game as well, there's a bit of that. You think New Zealand finally getting over the line against, uh, France at home. You know, like there's, there's a lot of those kind of matches, even New Zealand South Africa, they were two great teams, 95. And it was like, kicks kind of decide the thing you know what I mean so it's a, it's a funny one it's rare that you get a really free flowing one so maybe maybe we're, we are being harsh no, but it's, it's worth asking it's, the question it's absolutely the, like Ogaris wrote about it after the World Cup he's like this team needs to find that extra percent that that Grand Slams for now you know, mm. shouldn't be celebrated in the same way that we have done in the past. It should yeah. all be about a World Cup quarterfinal. And for Leinster in that context, it's about winning a Champions Cup because they haven't, yeah. like a lot of these players have never won either a Champions Cup and some of them haven't won a URC either. So they, they've, they've, like, you know, they've two years of URC semi-final defeats as well as uh, Champions Cup final defeats. Now the URC semi-finals were in part sacrificed because of the way the schedule yeah, is yeah, and yeah. they were chopping and changing and they got ambushed by the Bulls and ambushed a little bit by Munster last year. But... There's now a kind of catalogue, a back catalogue of, of of finals where, especially the, the La Rochelle games, where they get themselves into unbelievable positions and then find a way of losing yeah. them. Now, yeah. the opposition has a lot to say about that. Leinster always be Toulouse. Uh, La Rochelle always be Leinster. Hmm. And Toulouse always be La Rochelle. There are There is a style. <laughs> there, there is, is a, definitely. Yeah. And these games between the best yeah. teams, like the World Cup quarterfinals yeah. and the final, they're very, very tight and it does come down to fine margins. But South Africa, my my, my friend, yeah. always find a way of winning these. They go to the place they have to go to the win by a point. Set point piece. Back, set back piece, to back to back. The more and, you look at us. Yeah, and Leinster can't rely on a set piece yeah. in the same way. Because that's the that goes to the point. I think it speaks a little bit to that point about finals. Like it's 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 so much easier to deliver effort and like physicality, I think, in, in the bigger games, I think. And um, I think that's that's the one thing that I would say that Leinster probably can't rely on milling a team in a scrum. They're still playing a fast-paced game, lots of ball handling, lots of those things, and they're coming up against a team that's not going to lie down because it's a final. They're going to be physically putting the bodies on the line. So they probably... Do they have to do it a harder way? I think Ireland are probably in that world too. They have to do it a harder way. I think New Zealand, like they played some fantastic, they played most of the thought of the attacking rugby, but fell down at key moments in defence. Yeah. Um, and I think... I wonder, do they have to do it the harder way? And maybe they do. That is like, I think that's a reasonable que- reasonable to, to, to uh, come in with one, observation. With one stat on Leinster the last couple of years that kind of sums up where they are. Like in the last seven seasons, Leinster have lost three Champions Cup finals, two semi finals, and a quarter final. From mm-hmm. 2012 to 2018, Claremont lost three finals, two semis, and a quarter final. They have identical records of losing. Obviously, the difference is one year Leinster won it, Claremont were eliminated in the pool stage. So that's the only differentiator. And, so and the, 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 the kind of the team you look at as the biggest kind of bridesmaids in tournament history. Leinster mm. have actually matched their knockout record in the last seven That's seasons. A great start. Which shows, which shows how much they've come up short. Like, yeah, I, I it also shows how consistent they are across the season and how good, like they are yeah, one yeah. of the top two or three teams, but they want to be number one because there's no, like no one's, no one, well, no, like not that no one will remember this Leinster team, but like if they want to be in the same company, like they're all, you walk into UCD and I spoke with this last year after the final, I mean, there's pictures of your team all over the place. There's pictures, Heineken Cup is in the lobby. Like, they are surrounded by these images of these great teams. And if they want to get up on that wall in the future, mm. they've got to win this one. I mean, yes, the URC counts for something. They haven't won that for two years, as I said. But you'd imagine, like, like it's all about going, I think when it comes to finals rugby and these tight games, you have to go to dark places. But the, after all the final pain that they've been through, surely mm. they, they that that's not going to be a problem from them this year, that they that they're not going to fall in love with themselves because they had a great second half against the Bulls, that they they won't be satisfied oh, no, until think, they get yeah. to that point. And I think the New Zealand quarterfinal defeat means that next time, even if they have a great pool stages again, the players who were there will, will maybe just be a little bit less carried in love with themselves sailing into a quarterfinal. I just think that these experiences, like it's a little bit like Munster in, in, in 06. They've been through so much pain now. They can't allow themselves to be to be carried away on the on the vapors of beating Toulouse in the semi-final well you know it has to be all about this one thing and, and I watched I, I mentioned I watched Chasing the Sun you want to see Razi Erasmus tearing strips off the, the oh, South Africans yeah. after the they, they lost Collins, unbelievable, unbelievable. Great, great timing as well unbelievable yeah. he stands up in front of a room and I know it hasn't been broadcast in Ireland yet 
I, if you can get your hands on a copy, it's um, it's to see Razzy Rasmus stand up in front of a room of World Cup winners, largely, and to tell them that they and and to point out his captain in front of that room and go, "You are not bigger than South Africa. The only thing that's bigger than South Africa is South Africa." Then he goes on to say. You, you go around singing and you think you're great. You're singing in, in Jose, you're singing in Afrikaans, you're singing in English. But um, but you wouldn't, you'd, you'd say you'd die for South Africa, but you wouldn't die for South Africa. You're oh, false. Yes, you're fake. It's like unbelievable. And to allow, no, whatever about saying it to the group, mm -hmm. to allow it then to be broadcast to the nation, <laughs> obviously knowing that they're, like, they, he would have had sign off on what went out to the world. Mm -hmm. And then to cut, but they went back, like they went to that dark place and then they came out the other side and they went back to back to back and won the World Cup. And and I'm not saying Leo Cullen needs to go into the room, but I, I don't know how Leo Cullen does these things, how he runs things, but he has Neen Arbor beside him who's been in that room and has his own style. But to see the place that Erasmus went to after they lost to Ireland, he didn't think they were disappointed enough in that game. Mm. It was fascinating. It's a, such an insight into where, how he, he, played on his players' minds. Look, they don't give any tactical insight away. You don't see anything tactical. It's all the more motivational side. But my God, it was fascinating. It was interesting and his comments on Ireland as well. You know, they see themselves, Ireland be, see themselves as a smart team. Like, oh, they're so smart. Like, it was, yeah. it was a funny. I think, I, I, I think he was probably right. You know, I, uh, I think, I, I think it, he, it rang true for me reading those uh, quotes. And I don't, think he, I don't think there's a great degree of warmth either. I think that, like, that he's been studying Ireland. They're obsessed by Ireland in, in a way. And they... Like I just, th I'm not saying that you copy what he does, but you look at what he, the triggers he's, the buttons he's pushing to get that team to the place they need to go, and you just wonder whether, by not losing through a season the way Leinster, and Leinster have had more adversity this season than they have in, in a lot of other seasons, but Ireland even sailing through the pool stages, Farrell was never able to bring them back down to that place because they were winning. I just wonder uh, about whether. I don't know where you do it. I don't know when you do it. I don't know. Like, I mean, Czech probably was the best do coach like, at doing it. I don't know. I don't think they have to do it. No, so I think they did that last year. Right. I think they did that against La Rochelle. I think they blew themselves out after, you know, I've been banging on about this. I think they blew themselves out after 25 minutes. Yeah. I think they looked like they were frothing at the mouth. Like, now, I think they might have lasted better. I think they would have, they probably would have lasted the pace if Ryan stays on the pitch. Yeah. Um, that was one of the best 25 minutes I've ever seen in a blue jersey from any man. Uh, I just thought it was it was unbelievable, that performance. And they might not um, have him this year. No, uh, that's a serious injury he's got, I think, you know. So we need to hopefully, like, well, from a lens like man, that picture that they put out. Yeah, no, but I think, look, you'd hope they might sneak yeah. him back in, but I think he's really important for them. Um, so look, it's it's a it, to, to my mind, I think they needed to be calmer last year. I thought they they built that up for weeks before, I didn't yeah. pick any of the lads, you know, they were all doing whatever mad fitness tests and all to be ready, and then nothing the week before, you know, so yeah. they were frothing at the mouth for this thing. They were doing all their video work for them, built it up too much in their head. where you need to build it up, but to a certain extent. And I actually think they went away from being, trying to be the smartest team. I thought they had some brilliant moments, like, you know, the, the line out bits, all that, because yeah. they were smart play. But uh, there's a point where you have to be calm and clinical. Like yeah. the, 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 you have to kind of have that, would you call it, that kind of elite boxing mentality, that Floyd May Mayweather kind of mentality where you're just so calm, no matter, no matter what the situation is, and um, that you can kind of, is it the be like water? You know the kind of Bruce Lee be like water. I would be going that way with Leinster, not yeah. the other way. Because I, I think they're they 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 ran out of gas to me, and I thought I think they're they have they need to realize how good how many how deep the resources are and how, and what the strengths of the team are to me and where they need to improve. And I still feel I think Nina Bar was a real recognition of what they need to improve. I haven't we haven't seen it yet, but I expect that to get continue to get better. A la Felix Jones with with with, with England. You hope that that's what happens with Leinster as, as he has more time with them and I hope that they've learned that they need to be a little bit calmer um, and not blow themselves out physically. You also use their bench. Like one, of the things, bench one of the things over yeah. the last couple of years against yeah. La Rochelle, their bench, they haven't used it well enough. No, they blew yeah. that. The two years ago, they were worse there, in yeah. fairness. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was bringing the lads on for two or three minutes at the end was a complete yeah. waste of bench. Not trusting what, they, yeah, had, what yeah. they had there, but you'd... Yeah. Like I, I, I'm not saying they got they got to go replicate it. I just always oh, such an inter oh, interesting no, insight point. into yeah, yeah, yeah. into how the world champions got it yeah. done. And they won. Like if you're talking about a mentality monsters, mm. a team that won three knockout games by a point. Yeah. You know, games like like the England game, they shouldn't have won it. You know, they, they, it was such. It, it was just that's what they had to do to win. I'm not saying it's what Leinster have to do, but Leinster have to find their own way. And Declan Darcy's there. You know, he's a Gary. You know, he'd be an acolyte of Gary Keegan. They you know, Ireland work with Gary Keegan. They are working on this stuff. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean like they're different people they come from yeah. different backgrounds to the South African players there's a different it's a different setup do you feel but they get just, it done this year Rhodes? 
I don't know because I, don't, I I would have question marks over their ten like their ten situation. I, I've never we've never the fact that we're even debating who starts ten for yeah. Leinster in a Champions Cup knockout game just speaks to me of a, of a team that has a, a lot to prove in that area. But the first time they won it. They had a 24-year-old who'd never started a Champions Cup game before the final. Well, maybe he had started, but he, he it, came it, off the bench against Munster in the semi. Yeah, it's very yeah. different. Harry Byrne's 24. There's no reason why he can't grow and grow and grow. Jack Crowley was 24 last, 23 yeah. last year. He got done for Munster. I'm not saying ruling it out, but I, it, I think there's a question mark at this stage with all You'd of their talents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's such an important position. I, I, I think you're dead right, you know. It's, it's the big question over Leinster, but... I don't know. I think this year they get the job. It'd be literally. We've, uh, we've sat here at the end of every season and said, "Oh no, next year I'll get it done." Next year to the league. Well, no, like we're, it I know, we're far enough through at this point. I think to say, like, uh, like no, look, I, I still like you know. I, I think, think they get them the every job year. Done. They haven't won any of these well, matches. I think the like, draw, the fact that La Rochelle screwed up the pool stages as well. Are they in Cape Town this weekend? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a tough game down it in is, Cape yeah. Town. The Stormers probably because they're at home. Stormers have the capacity to throw in a B team in a semi final, like because because of the, the way they value the URC, but they're not going to do it at home to La Rochelle this week. Yeah. Stormers could take out La Rochelle this week, and then the, the, the way is open because the Bulls can't come to can't play a semi final at home. The South African teams can't play semi final at home under the rules, um, and there's no one else in the tournament. Maybe to lose, maybe to lose, but they have had to lose a number in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. That really you could say if 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 La Rochelle get knocked out this week then the way is clear. Then yeah, there's really yeah. no excuse. Like there's one team who have their number and have had their number. But other than that, like you're looking at it going, right, this is theirs to lose. And even if La Rochelle win, like they're flying back from Cape Town to go to Dublin. Like that's, that's, a, tough, that's a very tough... If any of the teams, I just feel like they can do it. No, no, yeah, like, I, I, I really hope Leinster and Leinster La Rochelle win this weekend just so we can get that game. And, I'll be magic. Yeah. It will yeah. be I, think, magic. I think Leinster want that one too. I think they're hurt. Yeah, well, and they yeah. have done it this season already. And look, yeah. but I still think that's the most dangerous fixture they could play at the same, same time. Exactly. I wouldn't say they fancy Munster and Croke Park either if it ever came to it. But um, like, mm. they are. I think they are. They're they're around so long. They're the most experienced. They're essentially have the Irish team. They are the favourites for a reason. And I think they're the best team in it. If you if this was a sixteen team league, they win that league. But it's not. It's knockout rugby. Yeah. And Ireland yeah. and, and and Leinster have a bit of a problem with knockout rugby. And until they start. Getting over line in these games. It's actually we'll crazy. Like, as, I, as I listed their their kind of record in this tournament, like matching Claremont. To, that's a great line. In terms line. of futility. Like right. that. that's, that's, oh, by all means, rob away. <laughs> like, well, that's mad. Like, to, to think mad. that a team that good has gone, like, has botched it so many different mm. times. Like, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. I, I think it's like if they if they get if they get it done though, I could see them going on a bit of a run. But like you could like they should they, they should be on should be on the like, they could be like yeah, yeah, yeah. it should be like you know, Dublin a few years ago. No, they're going to run like RT. I think they're going to run like RT. I don't think they're bet. Like I don't think the field is as like I'm a big Dublin fan, but like you know Dublin's rivals really were. Well, I suppose there is one or two teams. I think La Rochelle. La Rochelle are no Mayo. Let's put it like no, that. But like, no. and, and Dublin only wins those games narrowly. It's not as if Dublin were steamrolling everyone in finals. You know, sure, but like I think La Rochelle. I think it'd be unrealistic to expect in this era any team to go, I mean, La Rochelle are on for three in a row this year, yeah. I guess, but any team to go and just dominate this tournament because I think, while it's not a really deep field, I think there are a couple of really good teams. Yeah, and I think right. Toulouse, La Rochelle, I think Bordeaux are coming. The English are on the way back. So I think like they're, they're, this is going to be a competitive field. But the last couple of years, yes, especially with, with a final in Dublin and everything going their way, they should have got, like whatever, Mar like Marseille was a tough ask, but they got themselves, they had Sexton on the pitch, they got themselves in the winning position, didn't get it done. And so that's a that question hanging over them. But you're like, absolutely they've underachieved. I mean, one Champions Cup in 12 years for Leinster. Mm. When they've the been... League, the league situation is not good for me. I, I don't think well, that's, that's... I think that's... What do you mean? Just that they haven't won enough of them, to my mind. Well, yeah, they, you know they, I mean? they haven't won it since the South African teams joined, yeah, first yeah, of all. Yeah, like, mm. yeah, yeah. Well, like, I, I, again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. And like Leicester, like whether Leicester have enough to, to make motivation out of what we're talking about, I don't know. But like, there's already talk that they're going to rest lads for the two, two week trip to South Africa. Like, I think you just got to be backing the players play, for the rest of the season. Not, play. maybe not every game. Play them in one game and not the next. But even the the, the experience of going away together, bonding, all that sort of stuff. Like, I don't absolutely. think that's if, if Leinster are still in the Champions Cup. I don't think they'll send it anymore. I think they bring all of them and you, you use that as a two week should? warm weather camp, yeah. a bonding experience yeah. away from Ireland. Get them away from their families. Yeah. Just drill them. Like even if they don't play, just drill them. Spend all the money you need to get over there. I mean, they have to rent Crow Park in a couple of weeks, so it's, it might, they might not have a little money <laughs> left. I mean, Crow Park for URC knockout games is going to be a tough sell. But, um, yeah. like, I just think the idea of resting players at this time of the season, unless there's an IRFU mandated, you can't play them. And I'm sure there is for one or two of the games. 
let them play. Why? Like they need Why rhythm. They well, need to play. The schedule, just tell them to piss the schedule this year is different. It's like so if if you keep progressing, it's a two week break after the Champions Cup final till you or see knockout. So it, it's not like like for like the last couple of seasons where you're kind of having to say, oh, should we rest them for this knockout game or start them all? Like you can basically have a week off and then but really I do think they the seem to have a cap there's a cap on games as well and minutes will so it, like it, the two week break might not actually matter I mean, you'd, you'd hope some common sense would prevail and they'll say hold on a second here. it's not going to and it's not played all the all the time week. but you play like put some do what they did last weekend and put you know put Sheen yeah. and Kate Doris on yeah. the bench and get you know manage them that across it Lens but get them away like, that, yeah. dude, like yeah. I think I think take them seriously go on and they maybe don't even play them both games play them in the first game even fly them home or, or keep them there for, for a training camp and then fly them back on the, immediately after the game. Do something. But I just think leaving them at home to train in UCD for two weeks, I just, I don't think it's worked and I don't think it's sensible. It's a risk. Yeah. I think it's a big risk. I think it's a really big risk. I think it's a way bigger risk than taking them. Put it that way. Yeah, well, I suppose their knockout journey starts here. We're getting a bit of ahead of ourselves with a two week break later in the year, but. Yeah, you know, it's a talking point that, that was. Well, God, if they're not around then, then we're having an inquest next Maybe week. You know, if like yeah. they, if they don't get to the final, so the sure, La 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 is a big, a big knockout game. Yeah, huge. but like yeah. you know, find like, winning it is basically if they don't win it, it's failure yeah. every year. And if they don't get to a final, that's a major, major capitulation. Especially if you haven't gone and hired a World Cup winner coach. Yeah. You know, yeah. I know Slimans coming next year, but. Uh, that would be a big, big disappointment and would uh, open up a whole new can of worms in terms of questions. And that's the, that's the level they're being held to. It's, maybe it's deeply unfair, but that's what we all expect. Well, it makes, thing, it makes for great talking points, to be fair. It makes it like, you know, I don't think we would be as excited about this run if Leinster had won the last two yeah. and we've got like three in a row. It uh, wouldn't be that exciting, whereas this, yeah. it feels it feels Like huge. Scenario Planet, like if they lose to Leicester, it's cataclysmic. Yeah. If they lose to La Rochelle... It's cataclysmic. Uh, or the Stormers, the fall me. Like, that's La Rochelle's just a whole. So we're get, we, get, we have to get Declan Darcy in here to talk about their mindset because that's just in your head stuff. And then a semi final, if it's Munster or whoever it is at, at, the, at the Aviva or Pro Park, Park or, or yeah, Pro Park, yeah. if they lose that one, then that's a, that's a major, major <laughs> failure. Well, and then they get the Spurs. Yeah. Like, generally, like, this, is, no. this is the level they're at. And it's, oh, that's yeah. why it's so interesting. Well, it Whereas Munster, Munster lose this weekend, they play well. I think they'll get a bit of a pass. You know, everyone will say, well, they can focus their we'll efforts on the URC. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it's a different... They're, they're, no, one's, no one has held to the standards they're held to. No one has the resources they have either. That's yeah, true. Exactly. Yeah. That's what Apart they are. from French teams. Yeah. 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 Moving on to Ulster and Connacht. Like Ulster, it's been a, a crazy <laughs> couple of weeks. Obviously, McFadden leaves. Johnny Petrie, the CEO, leaves as well. Now, Stephen Kitch off it appears is going back to South Africa after just one season which is being spun as a positive which shows where they're at I suppose people are saying it's freeing up money for other players but he was meant to be a big marquee signing and then they go to Montpellier this weekend and I know they I suppose play better against the Stormers than they had the previous week against the Sharks but even even that was they didn't hold on and they lost again and that's I suppose where they are that's being spun as a positive as well like what's your take on where I they are and all just in a position where they, they need positives they can't they yeah. are, they're, they're so beaten down but they're not, there's not many positives to, like Kitsov, I talked to someone fairly senior in the, the Stormers last year and they, Kitsov never wanted to move to Ulster but the money was too good so he went and it was like a two-year pension job and he was going back to to the to, to Stormers. It looks like his family haven't travelled. He, like he's been hit and miss. I don't think he was the kind of player they needed anyway. I don't think a loose set is really what they need. Look, I think he's a brilliant player and when he goes back to the Stormers, he will be part of a brilliant team where he, like he was their captain you know, a bit of a franchise player. Like they value props more than anyone else. So Kitsoff and Malherb are a great combination. Yeah. But watching him against the, the the Stormers the weekend and getting destroyed by Malherb, you could almost see then that he was like, "I'll oh, take me home. I, what am I? What am I, what yeah. am I working with here?" You know. And he hasn't been valued for money. No. But like he came over after winning a World Cup. Like I think signing current Springboks is a massive risk now because they're like Dwayne Vermeulen went, was there for two years, did nothing, went back and won a World Cup. Kitsov's been here for a year, hasn't done much for them. Kosia was great because he wasn't playing for the Springboks. I know Snyman has been, well, Snyman's probably played more K for the Springboks Kosia than he has. was injured for, for loads of it as well. They haven't had no, they haven't had but a massive amount of luck with big But big when they got him fit, he was very, he was oh, he very was a good. Player, and, yeah. and like, you know, think of like Johan Muller again, a former Springbok. But a current yeah. Springbok now in this era where the URC and the Rugby Championship are operating on different calendars. So they they don't get summers off. They play all year round. And basically, the, all they want to be is Springboks. So they're, they're getting money in Europe. And yes, Snyman, when he's played for Munster, has been great. But like he he's played probably more for the Springboks than he has for Munster or, or around the Pretty same close. in the last I'd say it's couple close. of years. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a massive risk now to go and sign a, a current Springbok. Mm. Because, really because he, he, they're, they're going to be flogged. And, and even if Kitsov wanted to be, and he, I'm sure he has tried to be everything he can be for Ulster, He's, he's wrecked. Like, you know, he hasn't had a break and, and you kind of flog your farm players. I think, you know, you kind of, like, they're not under IRFU uh, player management. 
guidelines. So you kind of they're there to play in the weeks where the Irish guys are away and bring up the standards. But he hasn't done it for them. I don't think he was a particularly exactly. They would have been better off signing Malherb actually. You know, the tight head would have been much better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even still, I just think there's a risk there. But it speaks yeah. to the whole. I mean, Richie Murphy's got a massive job in his hands. Massive. I, I, I think he might be a good one for them, though. Yeah, well, because like, I think they're going. If you look at the finances, like as well, I, I think, you know, he could be the guy. We talked briefly about it last week as well. His connection with all these kind of young players coming up, you'd hope that he might be able to influence one or two of these young Irish talents to kind of come up. They won't be big money, but they could be really good players. Um, and I think he's a good coach alongside that. You know, yeah. it could be a steadying hand up there. Hopefully, he'll have a feel good factor as well. But. Richie can, Richie can be tough. Richie can be tough. Seriously, he can be very harsh at times as well. So he, I think he might be the, the right medicine for up there. Um, I agree. You know, you still they still lost the game, um, but I think given the challenge, I I think that that was a close match and it was within a score. That's a, that is a result for them in the situation they're in at the moment. It definitely is. Yeah. Um, and in know, terms of Richie Murphy for the long term after this season, I suppose. It's not very attractive for some. Not that they could afford a big name, given they're shedding salaries and cutting squads. Like, is in they probably don't have a huge. Pot. I don't think they have enough money to go after any imposter or someone like that. And I think Richie has earned probably the right to be the next Irish coach who's hired by a, by a province. So, I think he's there with a view to taking over on a long term basis. And I, and if he gets an uptick, I I think the job will probably be his to turn down. But he has to be very careful as well and make sure that it's the it's not a damaging job for him because it's a uh, like he, it's hard to turn down an opportunity at one of the four provinces, but it's it's looking like it's going to be a major rebuild job with like Nathan Doak starting at ten and um like the, we had moments there at the weekend, but like that's a project, you know. He's been yeah, I know he's played a bit of both, but like you know he's been a nine as professional I mean, career. Jackson was a great for the try. Yeah, yeah. so like this. The, you know they're shedding. I know Billy Burns is not the this podcast's favorite out half, but he is very experienced. You know, <laughs> don't like, tie Will to that. Yeah, I would have. Very I would right. share. Like, but I mean, we're talking about him in terms of like getting yeah. it done at championship. You know, winning championships. Like, not get, like what are Ulster's games next year if they're shedding? You know, seven or eight senior pros, including their marquee signing, and not replacing them. Like for like, like who's going to be their loose head next year if, if Kids Off isn't there? Like, you're really. Like they're not going to be winning the URC, never mind. Like, will they qualify for the Champions Cup? But that's in major doubt now. Like their last games against Leinster, they've had a tough enough run in, I think. Um, they've lost games that they should, they would normally win. I think that they're in a bit of a spiral, and, and Murphy's got a massive job in his hands. Mm. He's nearly better off. I don't think winning against Montpellier is. A, I mean, look, winning it, you can't turn down a trophy, but. It, is it actually good to be in the Challenge Cup right I don't now think for them? They, and even if they do, they're away to Claremont the following weekend, I don't see them. I think URC is probably where they should be focusing yeah, on. Whereas yeah. with Connacht, it's almost the opposite because of the way they bungled the last couple of weeks. You, the Challenge Cup is probably their most realistic path to Champions Cup because they finished the season with Leinster and Munster and the Stormers. Yeah, so it's, they yeah. need a win as well. Connacht, yeah, yeah. They are in a bad spot, I think, at the moment as well. Now, look, we think we give them a bit of a pass. Um, because they've weird even even like the lack of access, considering how many games they've left to, to kind of key guys at times, has been a bit mad over the last over you know that that has been a bit weird to me. Crazy, crazy stuff. But, even, but I think like sorry, to, to to just to tie off the Ulster thing, um, it's a real good point you make about Richie. You know, like uh, is he kind of trying to catch a falling knife type scenario? You know, is it is it too far gone? I, I, my sense of it is that it's not that. I think. Um, yes, I, you would love to see them replacing one or two of the big name signings, um, but it seems to me they need they need a reset. They need a, just to catch their breath and just be it, like if they are if they qualify next year for league, I think um, knockouts. I think that'll be a result, and it, it'll they'll be able to go. Okay, what do we need? Just take a breath, maybe get the f supporters behind them with some big re big results at home. I don't know if they can afford that. Look like they're broke, so like it's a little bit no, like monster. It's, it's hard week. to have a reset. Like it's like yeah. they need to have they kind of need big Champions Cup revenue of like a big game at Ravenhill or even you know you know they need that they they've lost Kingspan as their sponsor. They're struggling apparently to replace them in, in, in that. So like that's that was a massive wedge for them. They they, they had the La Rochelle game. That was a massive finance. That's why Petrie's lost, gone. You know it's it's. Uh, a reset's great in theory, but like when you're trying to re rebuild the coffers as well as as everything else. I think there are a few. I think would probably try and plug a hole there. Yeah, well, they like, don't know what as well. Like, but I, I think they still would expect a bit of return. And yeah. and I, I look, there's good players there. When Richie took over, they were still ahead of Munster and, and Connacht in the table, and that was yeah. a bit of a false position because they had tougher games to come. But you know, Munster and Leinster still have to go to South Africa. Um, mm. There's potential. There's good players. All that sort of stuff, but. There's just a bit of a certainly this season. It's going to be hard to arrest 
their form and get them into a playoff position, qualify for the Champions Cup, which is where you sell your season tickets. If they're in the Champions Cup next year, I think they're they fixtures, can kind of keep they it going. Should, they, should be, they should be top eight, I think, with their fixtures. It's harder this year, though. I think there's a, it's, it's a slightly better... I know the Welsh have been poor, but it's been a slightly better league this year. So it is... Mm. And they've thrown in a few really bad ones. Now, hopefully, yeah. Richie can get them together. And I think, again, I think it could... A valiant defeat against Montpellier will give them a week off to get ready for the for the run in and might be the best thing for them. Yeah. But at the same time, look, there's a chance there to go and win a competition and have a final and a day out for your fans and give yourself some good news. So maybe I'm being too trying to kind of um, cynical about it. Yeah, but I remember when we had Jonathan Bradley on before he uh, he sadly left us a few weeks ago and we were talking about them making a run the Challenge Cup. He's like, it's kind of re- it's a bit of a pipe dream to say Ulster can win this tournament when you see the teams they'd actually have to beat. Like away to Montpellier, away to Claremont, they're nowhere near that at the moment. Like the idea, oh, Montpellier, Claremont, they're not. They're, they're not they're, great. They're, they're great names. They're, they're not, not great, but they're, they're, they're tricky they're, away. They're it's great squads, squads away yeah, from home. Yeah. Like they are. Like Montpellier, it just depends on how they treat it yeah. as well. Like if they look at it as a as as a trophy worth winning, which Toulon have done did last year. And but teams look, Cardiff have gotten to the final in recent years. Uh, didn't uh, Edinburgh get to the final last year? Wasn't it like or or in recent years like teams that Glasgow. are that Ulster would yeah, see Glasgow, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. teams that Ulster would see themselves as better than, yeah, yeah. if not equal to, have gotten to this the final of this tournament in recent years and given them their fans a day out. So like Montpellier, like Ulster have beaten better teams than Montpellier away it, with this squad in recent years, just not this season. Yeah, you know they went within a point to La Rochelle in the European Cup last year. You know, like they're. they're there are good players in that 23. It feels a long time ago. No, it does, <laughs> absolutely. Like, but it's, you know, We're they beat Rassing this yeah, year. Yeah, it was like tarantula rainy. You know, it's, yeah. it's a... Yeah, yeah. But like they, there are players in the squad who've gone and done great things. It's just this year, they, they've been nowhere near. It would take something... Jonathan's you know, right, as he often is about Ulster. It would take something special. But at the same time, just the same... Throw out those names, yes, Montpellier and Claremont. They sound great, but on actually, like, at the moment, they're not brilliant teams. They're kind of mid-range. But that's uh, what Ulster are, like. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like a mid-range Ulster could still beat a mid-range Cla- Claremont under day. Like, yeah, no, you know. I don't think it. It depends what kind of team, and you wouldn't know what kind of team Montpellier might pick. They're in a relegation battle. They might say that's actually, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if Montpellier end up, and likewise a Poe, like so, Connacht go to Poe at the weekend. If Poe decide their top fourteen form is more important, then they put out the second string. Like you know, as I said, the last two weeks for Connacht getting hammered by the Lions and then letting that Benetton game slip. You know, conceding that try to death, you know, is it doesn't feel good. No. It doesn't feel good there at the moment. When they so, needed, they yeah, needed yeah. wins the last yeah, two weeks because yeah. they, as I mentioned earlier, they have a tough run in. So like, and they need all the big game, the big players. Like they really need them of all the teams. Um, look, it's I haven't felt good about them this year. I just feel like you know, there's there's years where you look at Connacht, you go, they're a real threat. They could go away, and you know, there's they're they're a handful for anyone. I don't feel that about this team. I feel like they've lost a lot of the. A lot of big games this year with kind of crucial moments. Think of the Leinster one; like that yeah. was a real like one that got away as well. Um, so they have that going on, but then they also have these kind of blowout losses where you have these kind of defensive like they, where they just everyone takes a day off. Well, not a day off, but they're just struggling. Whatever. Bordeaux, 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 oh, Bordeaux okay. was like a Friday night mess. in Galway. Like, Bordeaux yeah. was a complete mess, and that's not a good one for your home supporters to see. And the, your home supporters need to see you putting in a shift. And if you're not playing well, it still needs to be a tight game. You need people there. They need something to cheer. Yeah. A big tackle, a you know, a big you know, a big turnover. So, some of those things. And if you know, if they're not getting the kind of you know, in fairness, there's lots. Guys, when when Connacht are playing well, they control the ball around well with anyone, and they've got some seriously good athletes. But if you're not playing well, there has to be something else for the supports to hang on to. And I'm just not seeing it at the moment. Their defense, and like yeah. it's a very inexperienced coaching ticket, and there was a lot of disquiet within Irish coaching circles when Scott Fardy got the defense coach job because he wasn't experienced, and he got it ahead of, of of Irish coaches who felt they were more experienced than he did. And their defense hasn't been good, and I'm not laying it all on him because players have to make tackles, and some of the tries have oh, not been down to systems. They've been awful him, tackles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to 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 concede that try at the death against Benetton, who I think are a better team than Connacht at the moment. You know, like Benetton oh, yeah. are, are flying I think this most year. People had them pick. Did you? That, was it so? Did you pick them last? It was only two of us actually. Yeah, you definitely picked them to win last week. I think. Yeah, <laughs> Benetton are a good side, but still, you got them. They got themselves in a winning position, and then conceded a fairly soft try down yeah. the left. It was well taken, and, and and all of that, but. Still, I think that there's a softness to their defence there. There's been, like, I just, I, I wonder, like, look, Pete Wilkins is in the first year, but he came from within the set, set up. Like, Friend, I think, was did a great job there. He held the whole thing together. He was such a figurehead, a charismatic figure. Um, Wilkins, I'm, I'm not by any means writing him off as a coach by any, at all, but, like, he has got a very inexperienced ticket behind him, and he's got a big job in his hands to try and finish this season with a bit of positivity because... Connacht in the past have had nothing seasons, kind of seasons that went away from where they became a bit of an afterthought at the end of it. 
but they they can't really afford that anymore. And I, I to go back to your point about Bundy and Finley Beelham, mm. look, Finley Beelham had a kid during the Six Nations, he went back, he was given some paternity leave. I would have said to him, Claire, play in these URC matches and take the Challenge Cup off. The URC is more important for Connacht this season. 100% Bundy Aki, uh, look, he's got a, what Andy Farrell described as a rumbling knee issue. And he seems to be on a very much managed program by the RFU. But again, manage him during the Challenge Cup. Don't send him to Treviso where you're playing again in a game for like, like the Challenge Cup is a bonus for, for these teams. The the URC is where you need to be making your money yeah. and or earning your money. And I think that was a poor decision. If that was a decision by the Connacht yeah. coaches or they should have stood up to the RFU if it was coming from the RFU and said, no, we need them this week. They can have next week yeah. off. Um. Like there's an argument for them sending the B team over to to Poe this week and themselves and doing a top fourteen on it and going, we don't need this competition. We yeah. need to get into the, the get, get into the challenge. Well, I feel like this is year. a more re- I, I'm probably more realistic. Is almost. But I mean, for whatever about Ulster winning the cha- challenge cup being unrealistic for Connacht to go away four weeks in, four games in a row yeah. and win it, it's really hard. Now they, they were they good still, in the knockouts last year. They still have to go year. to the Tom and Park. They still have to go to the ODS in the league. Yeah. And they have the Stormers at home sandwiched in between those two games. They're not winning probably any of those. Certainly not the two away games. I would have thought. Maybe the Stormers at home on a good and, day. And they haven't, the coaching ticket haven't been able to get that bounce. Like, Friend was able to get, like, if they had a bad, you know, a bad couple of weeks, he was able to see, he seemed able to turn them around. They get a bit of a turnaround, but can't get over the line with the win to kind of, to really cement it, if you know what I mean. So you get a bit of a performance out of them, um, and they might be in a winning position, but they seem to falter at that last little hurdle. And they ha- that, that that is something Friend was able to get a few of those wins. He was able to go up to, now, Kingspan isn't as formidable as it used to be, but he was able to go up there, get a win there. there. Yeah. You know, so he's able to do those things and still have a you know a fairly middling season. But that's always going to be a tough thing for Connacht to, to have you know, an outstanding season, I think. And the game they play usually suits this time of year, so they usually yeah, hit the ground running at this time of year. But but playing under Rastro, they haven't really been able to get that. Like, you know, Bordeaux came to the Rastro, thought it was wonderful, and, and ran in and like ran one in of the best yeah. performances of the season. You know, the Lions thought it was great. They they love to visit the Galway. Like the sports ground doesn't seem to be a tough place to go anymore. So that's a real problem for them. So yeah. I think between the the coaches and not I because again you can't lay it all on them. And Muldoon probably has a big role in the fact that he's the one who has the connect identity and is yeah, the former yeah. captain. They need to get whether it's the end before the end of this season or before the start of next season and just re-establish a bit of an identity. A bit of the grit. Because, a bit of that grit. Yeah. That, you know, you, they, like there was a period where they would stick out. If they were at home, you could see them seeing out the last mm. 10 or 15 minutes of a game, of a tight game. You know what I mean? Maybe getting a try, but also you could see them having that 10 or 15 phase defensive set. I, I, I don't see that in this team. I don't know about you guys, but that's not, I don't yeah, see that in this team. That's a major concern. Team. And look, the, their yeah. budget's smaller than all the provinces and that's definitely, like they're not shopping in the same market as, yeah. they're not able to bring over a kid's off. Like that's, but that's even Cordero, thing. their big signing, obviously did his AC, yeah. It was ACL just before the season started, so it's yeah, that's no, absolutely that's but a fair point. Too, yeah. yeah, like he um, won Marquis, and he is a good player. Yeah, yeah like yeah, we were back in, I know it's twenty fifteen now, but he was he's magic. He's tearing magic, up uh, yeah, yeah. In, in that quarter final. Yeah. Just before we do our predictions to finish up, it's time for the left wing moment of the week in association with Bank of Ireland. My moment of the week was a timing reminder of how good Jack Conan is. Obviously, maybe a bit in the shadows with Caelan Doris kind of taking the eight jersey, doesn't get to start a huge amount of games, but taking that line in the second half and kind of making that big burst through. Just a reminder of how much. How, how, how good he is like a Lions test eight be interested to see now what way they go with him in the next couple of weeks is he starting at six with Doris at eight or do they go Baird six and Conan off the bench but just thought great try and, and a player who'll probably be big on the season I thought mm. yeah absolutely I think I mean any insight into the sixth or eight or where he might play no, nothing nothing I've heard yeah I, yeah. I think they'll, they'll they'll be reluctant to take Baird out of that six jersey mm. um, they have options with Conan you know Doris can move to seven as well. They, they like if they're thinking about going week to week, they could kind of rotate that through and try and move them around. But like Conan looks really good at the moment. I mean, mm. he, even if you're bringing him on for the last half hour of games and you know using your bench early, yeah. you're not losing much by doing it. So you can kind of say to Ryan Baird, empty yourself, or, or even if Ross Maloney's starting, empty yourself for fifty minutes, then shift Baird into the into the row and bring Conan on. But they've got they've got such great options. I mean, like. Max Deegan and Scott Penny can't get near the squad. Like it's 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 crazy, really. So, but no, I don't. I haven't heard yet. If I'm going to hear it all, my moment of the week. I, I just it's a lost skill that we never see anymore. But Peter Romani, who I wonder is he just kind of ticking off all the things he wants to do in rugby pitch before he finishes? But a dive pass for uh, Jack or Jack Crowley's try. Um, I just love that. I know <laughs> this. Scrum half I know there's probably a reason. Like you're supposed to be able to get to the next rook, so you're taking yourself off your feet. But God, I love the dive pass. <laughs> like, know, Michael it's Bradley, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick Farr Jones is a good man for one as well. Actually, yeah. Gregan too, uh, even just, later. Yeah, you said earlier, like it, 
Omani's retiring off from all well, that was international. The, like, I, I, thought, I thought initially it was just all oh, Ireland. He might do a year or months. You're saying you're thinking he's, he's going to be going completely. I, I'm not sh- not 100 percent sure. Was there rumblings on? Co- I, no, sorry, I'm completely just complete rumor. But was there rumblings? Was he happy about the contract? No, was there, was no, there a bit the, of stuff behind the? There was, the uh, he wasn't happy. How he was treated a bit. Yeah, right? the, there's a bit. Of, I think that's why he probably stepped down as the the Munster captain. Oh, really? Is is that it, the, yeah. They yeah. offer so the RFE didn't offer him a contract. It's been kind of man, badly handled, really. And then Munster were like, "Well, we don't have anything, anything in our budget." It was a bit of brinksmanship, I think, between Munster and the RFU in terms of Munster going. Then Hang on a yeah, second. He's your captain. Yeah, and then they found. I think they found a hybrid offer. But whether it was good enough or whether Omani said, "You know what? I've reached this point in my career. I'm captain of Ireland. I'm, I'm going to lead them to a Six Nations title. Mm. Baird is coming. Tom Ahern is coming. Mm. And look, a twicking on my thought. He, it, it looked like a bit of a no country for old men kind of scenario where he was running out of steam a little bit and struggling to get to the pitch of a game against an elite opposition. And I wonder if he just feels it himself and he's going, you know what? This is a good time to get off. But I don't know that for sure. And it was the week of the um, the, the, the Scotland game, the rumour started to appear and it became very, very uh, apparent on the day that it looked like, you know, the way he emotional, emotionally yeah. was. Mm. And then I think a lot of people are reading into a lot of stuff, but Roundtree said that weekend that it's imminent that a decision, whether it's a new contract or whether it's um, mm-hmm. a, an international retirement or a provincial retirement. But certainly there's, I, I don't, we've never had a player, I don't think, certainly officially retire from international rugby in Ireland. If you're an Irish player playing rugby in Ireland, you've always been eligible to play for Ireland. So it will be very strange for him to continue at Munster for a year if he's taken himself out of the international equation. But there's a first time for everything. So That's a good um, point. I'm Ooh. sure Andy Farrell's part of those conversations. But I think... My gut now will be that he, that he's on that he's probably going to finish at the end of the season. Um, but so not, I don't not know. South Africa, sure. Doesn't go to South Africa. Probably not. I, yeah, well, if he's stepping off I the carousel, the why would that. you? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, but I don't know that for sure. And and he could surprise us all. He could sign a three year deal and go to the World Cup or, or take a hiatus in Japan or something. But as it stands, the the, the kind of feeling, the he sentiment, like to me, it. weirdly, I th- I think he still looks. He looks fit. great for Munster. Nothing's changed for him. Um, like he still looks, you know, there's been a, he's been he looks like a guy who's kind of war torn for a while, you know, mm. shoulders and things yeah. like that, and he goes, you know, he goes down with bad knocks. And he stuff. just also looks like he's in the wars. Well, know, he's a hardy book in fairness. Yeah. He generally is in the middle of stuff, but I, I yeah, I, I don't know. He still looks like he's he, there's there's plenty left in him for me. Uh, now, I, now whether it's three years, I don't think it's three years, but, but there's certainly a good year left in him. So like, I don't know why you'd rule yourself out of an Irish thing for for that. Well, to be honest. Whether, uh, we don't know us, like what he's how he feels when he wakes up in the morning. I think if he was, again, to go back to my favourite people, the South Africans, if he was South African, he'd go to Japan for two years, he'd take a good wedge over there, he played a nice 16-game season, and then he'd come back for a, to, to try and go for a World Cup. He'd rest himself, mm-hmm. and they go, you are our most experienced player, you're a, war, a wartime guy, we've, we've developed a couple of guys in your absence, and then he comes back to Munster for one last year at the age of 37, plays 10 to 12 games that season, and then they bring him in and they... Like, like Dwayne Vermeulen who went on holiday to Ulster for two years and came back and won the World Cup he didn't even play against Ireland he was in the coach's box sitting beside Roger Erasmus <laughs> and he comes in and he starts the final like th- th- there is like there is method to that madness the South Africans base, like a lot of the South Africans station themselves in Japan play really lightly raced rugby so like there is an avenue there for him to extend his career make money but look he's very like he's got a lovely garden I don't think he needs the you know, yeah I was going to say who's in the gas of the garden but yeah, yeah, like, like, they have nice like, the but like, you know there's a lot and he's got kids and they're probably yeah, yeah. you know they're all in school and it would be a big thing to uproot your family but like there is an avenue there for him to go and yeah. have a, a different you know to extend his career and also give himself a shot at going like not playing URC every week in Champions Cup but like he's so synonymous at Munster. Feels like there's a few guys coming. I think the first point you're mentioning is probably like, like to go away to come back for a World Cup. Like it's those hard. guys will be, those guys will be in. Like Baird yeah. is coming. I think Ahern, as you said, is a nice option. I think, you know, Ireland's best option might even be to use Tyke Byrne there. Like, sure, you know what I mean? yeah, absolutely. So like there's it loads of things there. I, I feel like that. But the World Champions just won a World Cup with two 37 year olds in the back row. But so there is a, there is a precedent. So yeah, I, I'm just saying there's a different way there, but they I don't think it's going to happen. It's, it's a, they play they a different do. way. Yeah. They do, yeah, they do, they do. And yeah. and I, I just thought in the six, I thought his, his best game was in the last game against Scotland. I thought he, he brought yeah, his he best, really good, yeah. but he didn't have the moments that he that he would have had in previous tournaments. And then this guy is coming on with the half an hour to go in games, and he's like he's having all the moments. And yeah, I just think so. there's a bit of momentum behind Barry. I think it's a natural but, time. For <coughs> Brad to come in at number six, yeah, but sure, you know, my point is that Omani can't relinquish the jersey. He'll never get it back. I don't think. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I, I just, that's I'm my point. Like he either he either plays and plays in Ireland. I think he should play another year with Munster. I, I, I think more I, players I should probably go and see the world. He might be sick of it. He might be sick of it. Yeah, it's hard. Like. 
Um, my moment is the the Larmer, sorry, the Vos- Josh Van der Fleer try, but I just loved the the footwork from Larmer. I just think it's great when you see him in open field, look confident. He's a real instinctive player. Even to get the pass away after having made the step, I thought was a lovely bit of play, you know, and I just think um, he might be a really crucial guy for Leinster that he plays well. Um, you know, we don't know how Keenan's going to pull up after injuries and different things like that. So someone like Larmer, he actually is quite experienced and he's played in big games and he's had he's had big moments in big games. So I thought that was really pleasing to see that from him. I do wish he'd given that offload for the other one with the Russell pass inside to him and then he steps. He should have given that pass to Harry. I think it was, I don't know if it was Harry or Rossburn, but that was a bad moment. Um, but, you know, like sometimes you like to see a winger a bit hungry for a try, but I thought he should have passed that one. Now, they got the try in the end, didn't make a difference. But, um, yeah, great to see that from, from Larmer. And I, was, I think it's been a real difficult period for him. So I was pleased for on, on that side of yeah, things too. You know? if, if he's in good form, like I actually like like the idea of him at 23 and them doing a 5-3. Because I, I don't know if Leinster have six forwards that are so good that I'd be like, it's a definite option for them. Like I know you could have, what, Will Connors and Jack Conan. And then Connors has been... You know, he played against La Rochelle in that rain so game, played pretty well, but hasn't got back to the pitch of his previous... I don't think they have a good enough six forwards that I would automatically say, oh, that's mm. the option. I like Larmer as an impact player as a number 23, potentially. Yeah, I don't yeah, think... Yeah, well, I think with O'Brien still kind of... I'd say O'Brien is probably not back this week. I think he'll be on the wing, but I think that there's a role from there. And like Jimmy O'Brien covers... Like Jimmy O'Brien off the bench in the World Cup quarterfinal was outstanding. Magic. So that's another... You could, you could probably... Again, well, another of them, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of them like that 14 one, jersey, like, yeah. you know, that, I think... Keenan coming back means that uh, he will. St- I think Keenan will start this week, and Keenan will start whenever he's fit because he is yeah. Hugo Keenan. Like what I love about Larmer is that he's not a systems player, and he just does. And, he, and what he offers Leinster in a very like there's, they don't look structured sometimes, but they you know there's a lot of structure to what they do. He breaks the structure so easily, and when he's confident and he looks back back, I think he's been questioning himself, second guessing himself. Yeah. He didn't look like he was doing that at the weekend, and it was so good to watch. I love like he, I remember he was being compared to Christian Cullum when he first broke onto the scene, and we haven't seen that player for a long time. It was great to see it, and he's a he's a bit box office, isn't he? He's like a different player to any of the players that really come through the Irish system. Yeah, I love the size difference. I always think that's the great thing about rugby is that you you always used to see different sizes of the guys mm-hmm. having big impacts in different positions. Um, and that's why I always find that the best thing about our game. And I think it has been going another way for a while just because sometimes you need to be a certain size, particularly at the international level. But I think at Leinster, there has to be, a, you know, provincial level, There's there should be a space for for guys like that, certainly. It's in, unless, you know, and, and, and he, to my mind, is one of those guys that is a small fella, but really punches above the weight. And then that little bit of footwork, like he'd be a nightmare on 60, 70 minutes if you were playing against Leinster and you see him in open space and you're a big forward, you're going to go... <laughs> Like, Forget it. Like you mean you're 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 more likely grasping the thin air. Like, like you know? let's just most memorable tries in the last eight nine years. They're, they're largely Jordan Larmer either at Tomlin Park against the Scarlets. Like yeah, the, just moments. Yeah. Like you know, the, the, I know they score great team tries, but I just love a player who can just break a game yeah, on his own. And he hasn't done it enough, and he's lost his way a little bit in terms of Irish selection and all that sort of stuff. But he did start the Scotland game, and I think that's just given him a little bit of belief back. And it's yeah. it, and I wonder like the, Farrell loves him, loves his attitude. They all love his attitude. I think. He struggles maybe to do what they ask wingers to do in terms of linking the play and, and that sort of stuff. Defensively is the tricky bit for him for me. He's always struggled a little bit on that one for whatever and reason. And high ball is an issue as well at times. Yeah, although his high ball I think ha- is improved. I would say that's less of an issue like uh, to, to my mind. Certainly in attack he's good, but I think defensively sometimes he can be got at. He's a small guy. If you can put it on him where he doesn't get a run in, certainly you know there's you would see there's an opportunity. Same as all your Shane Williams, your Jason Robinson. You know They're brilliant players, but if you can stick them in a spot... They're a small guy. Um, but I, I think the defensive bit, I feel like that got in his head a little bit, a little bit like Stockdale when he was struggling there. I think the two of them suffered from the same thing and maybe went away from, well, really, what I'm, look, you do need to get that right. There's no doubt about that. But they kind of went away from really focusing on what they're great at, I think. Hmm. And and sometimes it just takes a moment, like you had in the weekend, where he goes by two or three guys and creates a try from nothing um, for you to realise what you're really great at and what you bring to the team. Sometimes you have to remember what, what your differences are, you know? And they're they're not always bad things, they're good things too. And a new coach, new set of eyes as well. Like, yeah. he might not have been Lancaster's favourite player, but, you know, Neen Aber comes in and he might like what he brings. And, like, Neen Aber just won a World Cup with two five-foot-eight wingers, you know, similar around guys. and Colby, who are much quicker but than, than Larmer is. But they, similar they, guys, though. Similar like, size, yeah, you know, yeah. to, to go back to your point about size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Finish up with predictions. I'm going Leinster Munster for the Champions Cup this weekend. How do you see two games going? Yeah, I think Leinster Munster uh, as well. I I think Munster will do it. I feel um, away day. Classic yeah, they've yeah. just had a bad. They've, well, they've, not a bad game, but they've had a patchy game at home. 
I think they get the job done. Yeah, I think the hurt from the last one as well. Um, I can't trust them enough. I don't trust. I, I, I can see I, that. I can see that. Yeah. I, I, it's well within their capabilities to go and do it, but I, I think law of averages over there. Haven't seen Northampton beat them already this season in Tom and show a lot of grit and determined. Yeah, like good. they were good that day. I just wonder if they if this is beyond. I think it feels like a one score game to me though. Does it yeah, feel like that I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Like I know we talked about Leinster. Probably we started off Munster, then we went deep in Leinster. Yeah, but like they. I, that's the game this weekend I'm really looking forward yeah, to and I, I can't wait to be there but it's it's. Uh, I think it's the Saints yeah it's going to be a very exciting weekend I think Leicester anyway. will be Le- Leicester yeah at that one I think a lot of people are going that way anyway I'd like to thank Rudd and Luke for joining me in this week's episode of the Left Wing Podcast we'll be back next week recapping the Champions Cup last 16 in the meantime you can subscribe to us on iTunes Apple Podcasts or listen on independent.ie so until next time thanks for listening and goodbye